Good evening and welcome to City Limits, the show that provides you with information about the people, places, and events that shape the character of our community. Tonight we have a very special show. We're going to be talking about a new non-for-profit called Both Sides of the 50. And we'll have to explain what it is because I'm on, I'm kind of on the downside of the 50 if it's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm sure it's not what I think. My guest tonight is Shante Harmon Young hey. and Isaac Bird. How you doing? Isaac. Shante, welcome. Well, thank you. thank you. I mean, thank you. Okay. Real quickly, well, not necessarily so quickly, could one of you explain what Both Sides of the 50 um, it is an organization that was founded by my husband Cornell and, and Isaac uh, to promote, motivate, and inspire young people to do their best not only in sports but just in everyday life. So what we do is we take kids that are in sixth grade because we found that sixth grade is that time where you start making those decisions. and. Um, in making those decisions, some can be good, some can be bad, and your external factors may influence those decisions. So we take them, we mold them, we teach them how to dress, how to act, how we help them with tutoring. We show them that there's just a life outside of, of what, they, what they are normally used to. Um, we also give them tools in order to deal with conflict resolution as well as if they are in sports we promote that as well as grades we also try to figure out what it is that's good for them in terms of of, of their future and then after that we follow them through high school and whatever their dreams are whether they want to be carpenters athletes uh, or just go to college we want to go ahead and finance those dreams for them oh, sounds sounds like a worthwhile enterprise Isaac, whenever you say sixth grade, okay, now is this something they do in addition to school or are these particularly troubled youth or not troubled youth or just anybody that wants to well, get that's involved? A great, well, that's a great question um, and that's one of the significance of both sides of the 50 of, of, of the name. So you, it doesn't, you don't have to be a troubled youth or you don't have to be the youth that, you know, does everything correct, whatever the case may be. It's just getting we found out that getting to youth at that age, in that grade, that's when they start making really, really tough decisions, decisions that's going to set them or catapult them all the way through grade school, all the way through high school. And when it comes to sports at that age, that's the age where you know, these young athletes are really, really into sports and it can really guide them in a, in, in a right manner if they're pushed in the right manner. So, you know, the age is significant, but, you know, it's open for not just athletes, but people that are young, young adults that are in the process of possibly making decisions that could catapult their life in a great way or a, or a negative way. And we have to reach them at that age because we found out that that age is, is, is um, where they really struggle when it comes to making those kinds of decisions. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when you say the sixth grade, you're talking 12? Right around 12, 13. Yeah, right around there. Vicinity. Mm -hmm. Do you help, or can kids participate that are younger than that and older than that, or is it just strictly the 12, 13 year olds? We, start, uh, we started with 12 year olds simply because at that particular moment, we had been surrounded, our, our twins uh, are 12, and we noticed that their friends were making decisions. And our children are our leaders such that the decisions that our children were making, we found that some of the other kids were following them. So um, it kind of by happenstance, we realized that sixth grade was that age. However, if we find that a child, because the criteria is that you have to want to change, you have to want to make good choices. So if, if it allows that is someone in high school or someone, you know, after middle school, after sixth grade, um, would like to participate, we'll do what we can to help them. So it's really, we targeted that age simply because we found that that's when they start making those changes. But it is open to kids over sixth grade, but nothing below that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's assume that they, you know, come to you. Now, how, how do they, how do, Isaac, how do they sign up to get into this program? Or do you talk to the schools or how do you, how do you recruit Yes, talking to schools is one of the things that we're um, very interested in doing. It's one of the things that, that we're doing now. We have to get into the get into the schools, find out who these young adults are, who these children are, and see who wants not only 
needs to be in the program, but has, has the mindset to wanting to be in the program. You have to really want to change. So we're looking for people, young adults, that want to change. And, and you don't have to be, again, they don't have to be someone that's doing bad things, but someone that wants to be guided in the right light. So we're looking for these children that want to be guided in the right light. So we get into the schools, we talk to the parents. Parents is very important as well in our, in our entire program. We must get the parents involved. Um, that's one of the key things that we're doing as well, getting the parents involved. And, and that's, one, that, that's just one of the ways that we um, are able to get to our young adults. And, okay. and if I may, uh, the Riverview Garden School District has been really instrumental in helping us with that. Um, they've offered tutoring. They've actually identified a few children. And so um, that's kind of how the direction we've been going now. So we are looking to kind of get into the Hayeswood School District. But uh, at this point, Riverview Gardens has been very instrumental in uh, allowing us and also helping us uh, identify and, and get these kids on track too. What, um, when, when you say Let's just talk about the different things. Let's talk about tutoring. Mm -hmm. When you say tutoring, in other words, if I'm, like I had trouble with math when I went yes, to school. Lord. <laughs> that was, that was my <laughs> downfall. <laughs> I could get one and one correct, but when they did that algebra stuff, mm -hmm. that, was, that was another language. <laughs> but do you, do you, you, you know, like in other words, if, if a particular child is mm -hmm. the school district identifies this particular child having trouble with say math do you arrange for a tutor to help that particular child yes and that's where they've been instrumental because uh, a particular child that we were mentoring uh, his 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 teacher was just so extraordinary in uh, helping us to guide him and mentor him and she actually has recruited some other teachers uh, in the district and she's one of the ladies Miss Scott let me shout you out uh, <laughs> to actually participate and tutor them help us with the tutoring um, we also have volunteers so once we see where they're struggling then we say okay we go out and we find the tutor or we talk to someone in the in the district uh, and they have been very kind to volunteer their services after school um, also in their free time they've they've come out to football games and, and helped out uh, with that. But we follow these kids every, every week. We have contact with them between one and four times a week. So it's not that we just come and speak to them and leave. We actually see what their needs are and we try our best to fulfill those needs. So you actually, you actually get them into the program, then you follow up on a continuing basis. They spend a lot of do. nights at our house. <laughs> and that's very important. Um, you know, when I was that age, uh, and you're saying, you know, you had trouble with math, and I, so did I. So, uh, you know, having, having a tutor is one thing to help you in your class. But it has to go a little bit further than that. And that's what Shantae means by, you know, we're following up with them, we're talking with them, we're calling them, we're arranging things with them to be with them, to make sure that they understand that this isn't just about tutoring and get you at, um, your academics in order. This is about making sure that, you know, when you leave school, that you're able to make the proper decisions. And if anything comes up to you um, during, um, when you're out of school, when you're outside playing, sometimes, you know, these children don't feel comfortable enough talking to their parents about certain things, but they will say things to us that we can handle at that time. So it's about not just school, but making sure that they know and understand that if anything comes up, we're here for you the entire step of the way. Okay. Now, we were talking about pretty much school-related things. Now, what about outside of school-related things? What about extracurricular activities, uh, summer? What, what happened? And there? actually, summer has been great. Uh, we, we, we took the, the mentee that we had, we took him to, to Nashville, to Tennessee State University. Uh, we do a lot of extracurricular things because the biggest issue is getting them outside of this environment to let them see that the world is so much bigger than where they live. Um, so we take them to different museums. We've been to the zoo this year uh, when we had elected officials day. <laughs> we, uh, I took, we took a, a kid with us uh, to the zoo. So we also take them to um, areas where when they need to learn how to build things. We want to expose them to all different types of, of 
ways that they can make a living as well. Um, and that's a really big deal because everybody's not going to be a doctor or a lawyer. Um, some people, we need people who are going to be electricians. We need people who are going to be morticians. So we kind of bring them and expose them to different things outside of that. And we try to get them to see that, like I said, the world is just so much bigger than North County. It is. Yeah, and we also <laughs> teach conflict resolution, which is a big deal. I probably, need, I probably need to talk to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought North County was no, well to us. North County is great. The biggest area. <laughs> yeah. What uh, I said. What about extracurricular activities? Do you get them involved in sports and? Absolutely. Um, and one of the things that we'll be doing this year is going out to the Rams game. You know, I have a very good connection. I should go. Of course, Jeff, Jeff Fisher is, was my former coach in Nashville when I was with the um, Tennessee Titans. And um, so we want to visit some Rams games, go out to some Rams games. We want to talk to some Rams players um, and just expose the athletic side to the kids as well because a lot of our kids, you know, you know they, they, they turn on the TV and that's what they see and that's what they want to become. And we don't want to discourage that at all. We want to embrace that. You know, we want to take them out to games, take them out to Cardinals games, take them out um, to the Blues games and let them meet these athletes, talk to them, okay? And, um, and it's just a different experience that the kids in, in, in our neighborhoods not necessarily are having right now. So we just want to expose them to a lot of different things. And when it comes to sports, just take them out to the ballpark is, is one of them. What about what about technology? Are you introducing technology? To, you know, they're in introducing the world, it to us, Norm. In the, <laughs> in the world, in the world I grew up in, uh, I was actually an adult before they even had electronic calculators. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, now our little smartphones and whatever, you know, way beyond anything I would have thought of. Are you are introducing technology? We're, we're in, them, they're introducing it to doing. us, and that's the truth. But uh, as I stated, like speaking with uh, firefighters, and the firefighters have been really instrumental in helping us um, with regard to um, showing them what it's like to be a firefighter, a police officer. So we are looking at, at the world of IT. We actually, my husband and I have a friend who is in IT. So we are showing them just every single aspect of life so that you're not, your mind is not just on one thing. And technology, like I said, is they're more affluent in technology than we are. And so using technology, one of the things we are teaching them is how to use it responsibly as well, because Facebook is forever. And what you post on Facebook and how you behave on Facebook and Twitter um, impacts the rest of your life. And, and that's for me, in, in this program is important is what kind of human being are you going to be and teaching them character I'm even teaching them politics <laughs> because you know that's our thing yeah, that's and and we're teaching them ones. about government and how it works and and so it's, it's a really broad spectrum because at the end of the day we want them to look and see this world you know as a tremendous world and I could be anything not just with that one thing or that you know those little things that, that, that you see. We want to be anything. We want to be the guy who keeps the lights on, you know? And we want to be mayor of Blackjack. There you go. Hey, <laughs> I'm, get, I'm getting up there in years. I'm getting up there. Somebody will have to, Shante. Well, as we begin to wrap up this segment, Shante, what high school did you go to? I always ask everybody what high school they went to. <laughs> you know what high school I went to. I know, but the I am a proud yes. member of Berkeley High School, class of 1990, let me say, because you're from Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> as well. But um, since you gave me a few seconds, I just want to say thank you very much because I, you know how much I love you and being an elected official in the great, wonderful city of Moline Acres, you taught me so much. You took me in when I was first elected and you, you and your board made me the wonderful elected official I am today. And I love you so much and I promise I will turn your ties ready, your face <laughs> ready, your ties. Did I do it? Did I do it? Probably. Thank I you. Know. I love you, Norm. Okay. <laughs> How about you? I what high school did you go to? Parkway Central. Um, I, I, um, I'm a Colt, and um, of course they won their last football game last week, so I'm always following the Colts um, during the football season as I do the, the, the color commentary here for the, for the high school, so I'm really into all the high schools here when it comes to um, the um, um, football and, and, and the sports here. Mm -hmm. So Parkway Central. Well, you notice I didn't ask you the college, and we'll get into that <laughs> in <the next> segment. <laughs> right. yeah. About, we'll talk about the college. All right, great, wonderful. Okay, if you'll stay tuned after these sharp messages, we'll be right back.